Mr. McCoy back with today's edition of Literacy Corner. It features draw inferences to explain what a text says and features two articles, Nature's Tricksters and All About Owls. Here they come. Get ready to draw inferences to explain what the text says. In other words, use the information provided, use your own information that you already know, merge the two together to understand and explain what is going on. Northern mockingbirds are like no other bird. These birds can imitate just about any sound they hear. The sounds include those of other birds, animals, or objects. Mockingbirds can sound like a washing machine, a doorbell, or even squeaky door hinges. And unlike other birds, mockingbirds love to sing at night, especially when people are trying to sleep. Singer of many songs, mockingbirds got their name because they mock the songs of other birds in their territory. Mockingbirds put together other birds' calls and other noises to make their own songs. Every year, a male mockingbird adds new songs. Eventually, it may sing as many as 250 songs. That's a lot to remember. A mockingbird might combine the calls of 32 different bird species plus other sounds in a 10-minute song. Mockingbird songs are very accurate. They can almost sound like exactly like the original. Even scientific equipment cannot distinguish a mockingbird's call from the original bird's call. singing all night long. Mockingbirds copy other birds' calls to attract a mate. Males who develop the most songs are most likely to attract a female. Why? Ornithologists are scientists that study birds. These scientists say that females are attracted to males with the most songs. A male mockingbird usually sings at night when all is quiet then its songs are most likely to be heard uninterrupted by the chatter of other birds. The mockingbird may run through its songbook for hours on end until it attracts a mate. For a human who wants to sleep, there is no shutting up the determined singer. Fooled me again. The mockingbird's ability to imitate animals and objects has long been a source of humor. For example, one mockingbird was so good at imitating a barking dog that a cat refused to go outside. Another mockingbird was good at imitating a dinner bell. Workers on a farm thought they were being called to the farmhouse for lunch. When they arrived, there was no lunch. At first it was funny, but after about the tenth time, everyone's sense of humor was long gone. Even so, mockingbirds don't mimic the sounds of machines and other objects because they think it's funny. They do it to defend their territory. For example, mockingbirds can imitate the sound of a car alarm. That is sure to keep other birds away. Other sounds these birds imitate include phone ringtones, the notes of a piano, and a computer printer. Hearing such sounds up in the treetops has made more than one person scratch their head in confusion. You have the opportunity to share what you have learned about nature's trickster, not only the information from the article, but also information that you already know. Share with your fellow listener. Up next, all about owls. Be sure you get ready to draw inferences about the information in this text. Hear that? It may send shivers up your spine. But that sound is nothing to fear. It's an owl, one of nature's most interesting creatures. There are over 200 types of owls in the world. The smallest is the pygmy owl, which is about four and one half inches tall. One of the largest is the Blackiston's fish owl, which stands over 28 inches tall and has a wingspan of more than six and one half feet. Owls live in almost every kind of habitat, from forests to grassy areas, from hot deserts to snowy mountains, and from the country to the city. 
Owls are unusual birds. Unlike other birds, most owls are active at night. Their eyes are very large and really good at gathering light. Because their eyes are shaped more like tubes than balls, owls can't roll their eyes, but they can move their heads very far left and right. Their eyesight is among the best of all animals. When an owl can't see its prey, it uses its ears, which are hidden under its feathers. Unlike a person's ears, which are level with each other, some owls have one ear higher than the other. This helps them determine where a sound is coming from. The feathers on the owl's face also form a somewhat flat area that is round or heart-shaped. Scientists call it the owl's facial disc. Like a satellite dish, the facial disc helps to catch sounds and funnel them toward the owl's ears. As a result, the owl is extremely good at hearing hidden prey. His ear-like horns are simply tufts of feathers. No one knows for sure what they're for, but they have nothing to do with hearing. His real ears are hidden under his head feathers. They're positioned asymmetrically. The right one is slightly higher than the left one. Sound reaches one ear a fraction of a second later than the other. Sharp eyes and ears are not the only traits that make owls stealthy hunters. They are masters of blending in. The coloring of an owl's feathers serves as camouflage. Usually the feathers are dull browns and grays, the colors of tree bark and dried leaves. Perching on a branch, an owl can seem invisible even to another animal until it moves. In addition, the owl's wings let them fly silently and slowly. The leading edge of its front wing feathers is slightly fringed. The result is that the sound of the wings moving through the air is muffled. This lets the owl listen for prey without hearing the sounds of its own wings flapping. What happens when an owl finally surprises its unlucky prey? Like other birds, owls have beaks instead of teeth. They swallow small prey like mice and insects whole. Prey that can't be swallowed is pulled apart and eaten bit by bit. Later, the owl spits up the bones of its prey that it could not digest. Instead of building a nest from twigs or sticks in a tree like many other birds, an owl will find a shelter to live in. A barn owl will make its home in a barn. A burrowing owl will make its home in a burrow dug in the ground. Depending on the owl's species, its home might be a hollow space in a tree, a cave, or in a bunch of hay. When they hatch, owl chicks are covered with a fine layer of down and are blind. Their newborn down is replaced in a week or two. Parents work hard bringing food to their young, which grow quickly. They are ready to learn to fly between four and 10 weeks of age. Then they leave their parents and start their own lives as some of the nature's greatest hunters. So share what you know all about owls. This marks the end of today's edition of Literacy Corner. Another one will take flight soon. We will soar with it. It will be truly amazing. <laughs>